anointing it flows by obedience but it can get quenched by offense Abraham if I would be Abraham the first reason I wouldn't pray for the sick is that I just got caught in a lie and some of you heard my story when I stole a bicycle in the first year of our being in America and I never told you but my the who taught me to steal was my late grandpa in my life 13 years of age just came to America didn't speak any English it was on Saturday in the morning I made my way to the Goodwill and as I was there I saw this beautiful bicycle I took that bicycle because you know if it's there it's yours I believe this name it claim it blab it grab it possess it confess it before it was popular and as I took the bicycle next thing the police came in and they brought me to the Goodwill I didn't speak English so they had to use a translator to explain everything now remember this is Saturday so I apologize I didn't never I never turned my grandpa in because I didn't want him to suffer for the crimes he's committed against this country <laughs> I just said it was all my doing and ever since then I've never I never stole again that there's only one problem with that the girl who was translating her family was coming next day to our church and I was scheduled to preach 13 years 13 and a half years of age and I the pastor lived next to us so I told the pastor I got caught I am a thief please excuse me from preaching preach the message on stealing and I'll come to the front publicly repent and then you know two months later put me back in the pulpit pastor said no you're gonna preach and I said that family that translated me is coming how can I stand and preach there and this is where pastor taught me he says well you should have thought about that before you took the bike you're either gonna steal or preach but you can't do both together and that day I learned I know it's a, some of you will get offended what I'm about to say it's not really what you do that qualifies you for ministry it is your identity and yes I've never stole ever since but I've learned how to minister when my character is not what it's where it's supposed to be if I would have waited until my character gets so good that I become so self-righteous and so judgmental and that I become so perfect honestly that day would never come and many people would have been lost anointing operates through your identity not through your character anointing operates through my obedience not through offense see one of the reasons why I believe Abraham did not want to pray for Abimelech's wives is the very thing he needed to exercise his faith for others he himself didn't have his wife's been barren for years and Abimelech is saying pray for my wife to be healed what, what problem does your wife has fever maybe, maybe no she doesn't have fever uh, maybe a little neck pain no she has barrenness and Abraham says no 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 I have an experience breakthrough in my own family from this I can't pray for barrenness for healing because if I would have the anointing for that I would experience it in my own house and Abimelech says well the problem is that God told you to pray this is a good moment to get offended at God you're like didn't you ask him why he didn't heal my wife yet first God is asking him to pray for someone in the very area he himself does not have a breakthrough in I want to let you know that if you ever want to operate in the anointing consistently you have to learn to minister to other people when things in your life still are on delay when there's still even pain maybe in your own body maybe there's a still financial situation maybe you're still working things out and many people who simply say you can't go around saving people if your own family members aren't saved that's a hypocrisy actually that's faith because the family of Jesus came to Jesus and said Jesus you're crazy Jesus what do you think you're doing and Jesus didn't stop ministering and saying hey how come I'm going saving the world and I can't save my family Jesus flipped the switch and he says you know who my family is everyone he literally switched it he did not want the devil to corner him and to say oh look your own family isn't serving you why are you there saving the whole world Jesus ignored that continued to save the world and then his brother became the pastor and then his mom got baptized in the Holy Spirit God changed his family but he didn't wait for his family to change until he touches the world you know Smith Vigglesworth person that we all love who raised the dead and healed the sick and everything most people don't know but his daughter Alice was deaf all her life he had kidney stones for six years 
one of his children died at a very very young age and he couldn't raise him from the dead he raised other people from the dead but he couldn't do that and people made fun of him and they say why is your own daughter sitting with ear earphone all kinds of uh, hearing aids right in front why she has you have glasses why does you have kidney stones and you have to leave during the sermon because of blood coming out through your pants why you have to do that when you minister to other people and, but he didn't minister to other people because Smith Wigglesworth was the healer he was obedient to the healer that's why he healed other people the person who brought the Pentecostal movement to America in 1900 William Seymour when he went to Kansas City and he heard the message the Holy Spirit baptizes people with evidence of speaking in tongues he got so fired up he came to Los Angeles he came so excited he came to this one church and said guys I have a word from God God baptizes people today he get up to preach and he starts speaking about tongues they asked him do you speak in tongues he said no they kicked him out of the church they said you are preaching something you don't have he says I don't have it here but I have it here they said that's not enough and they kicked him out he went to a janitor's house started to meet in the house and say guys I don't have it but the Bible says it and I'm gonna preach it he didn't preach him he preached the word people start getting baptized in the Holy Spirit he still didn't have it until one day he received that and I'm thankful to God he didn't wait for a logic see many times we allow logic to stop the anointing of simply saying if I don't have it in my family I can't give it to other people you're not the source you're the channel and if you're connected to the source you can give anything you don't have because it comes from the source that's why when Elisha asked Elijah for double portion Elijah said I don't have it but if you watch because I'm connected to the source I'll give you what I don't have because it comes from the source you will always be able to give to people what you don't have if you're connected to the source. Don't look at your circumstances. You don't have to go pray for the sick because you're healthy. You're praying for the sick because there's a promise. By his stripes they will be healed. I had this personal experience about a few months ago when I went to Missouri. As I went to minister, the moment I arrived in the conference, I landed in the airport and I got sick. I got sick with fever and it wasn't a normal fever because usually, you know, I pray and spray. I pray and then I spray. If prayer didn't work, spray works. If spray didn't work, I just take a pill. And I did all three and nothing happened. I still was sick. I started to shake. I preached the first service. It was great. Preached the second service. It was okay. And evening service came and I got so sick. I got so sick that I, my body was just vibrating, shaking. And it wasn't the power of God. It was the power of fever. And that evening I was supposed to pray for the sick and I remember I went into the room by the sanctuary to pray just, just 10 minutes before the service as I'm praying and the devil just literally came into the room and said Vlad do everything but don't pray for the sick because people already know you are sick. How can you pray for the sick if you are sick yourself? And as I'm standing there pacing, debating whether I'm going to pray for the sick or not, I remembered when I was in Ukraine and a guy that I saw God using mightily to heal the sick. I saw people around me, they were used to be to heal, to, to sick, to be healed and everything. And then I found out six months later that he himself, before he came on a conference every service, because services lasted 30 days, they injected all kinds of medicine into his spine because of his pain. And God healed people through him when he was sick. So I was there in the room and that story came to my mind and this story came to my mind and right there in that room I said devil I said I'm gonna pray for the sick just to offend you just to make you look bad that's it and God is gonna heal people today not because I'm healthy but because Jesus Christ paid for every one of their diseases that's it I remember I got up there over 20 people came up with healing testimonies some healing testimonies I was crying amazing healing testimonies I didn't get healed and I preached one more service still sick the moment the conference was over and they dropped me off at the airport the fewer left I don't know I can't explain it but one thing I've learned I don't minister out of my experience right now I minister out of the promise of God in his word you want to operate in healing remember Satan will use your situation to tell you to stop and God will use his promise to tell you continue can somebody say amen I want you to write down number three anointing operates through risk but fear makes you lazy a man who had one talent he hid his talent and he said because I was afraid and God 
the king looked at him and he said do you know real reason why you hid that talent because you're lazy and I believe something the Lord revealed to me personally when I am afraid I become lazy when you are scared you develop a critical spirit when you operate in faith you will operate in a creative edge people who are scared and who don't take risks for God they will constantly operate in a critical lazy spirit when you get scared first and you say I don't want to take risks Abraham could have easily said I can't pray for the sick why what if they don't get healed I don't I can't pray for the sick because this and this and that many times people say I can't go power evangelizing why because I'm afraid if I get rejected I can't go call out words of knowledge why maybe I never heard it from God maybe it was just something I heard on my own if I go lay hands on the sick and nothing happens you know I'm gonna look bad and so what we do is because of fear we shy away every time you live in fear you will live in laziness and you will develop a critical spirit instead of creative edge the first time we had to give a car away I thought it was the devil that was speaking to me the second time we had to give a car away I was like this is insane this is crazy nothing you will ever attempt for God will come without risk that's why every hero of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 did it by faith you may say but God spoke to them audibly it still took faith because after God, st God stopped speaking I'm pretty sure they looked at themselves and says this is crazy this can't be God you will experience exactly the same thing but I want to give a little advice to every person don't take risks copying someone else your risks have to come from your own relationship with God.